you tell me, this liquid here that I find in packages of beef and pork and other products, is this blood? The quick and short answer is no. And the best way to answer that is to look at the overall chemistry of the, uh, of the actual piece of meat that we have in front of us. When I, when I worked retail as a retail meat cutter for about 14 years, this was a very, very common question. In fact, folks would get confused and think pork blood is pink rather than, than red like beef blood. And what we're looking here is this chunk of muscle or meat, and now that's gone through the conversion of muscle to meat, it is primarily about 70 to 75 percent water. So that's what you're seeing is water, but it's got color to it. Well, a lot of the driving force behind what makes meat color is a little protein called myoglobin. The reason why you're seeing this pink color here is essentially uh, pork is harvested at around five to six months of age, whereas beef is harvested between 16 to 18 months of age. As that animal gets older, they're gonna develop more myoglobin. A very, very uh, evidence of this is looking at veal, which is young beef versus regular beef. Veal is pink in color like pork is because it's harvested at a very young age. So where does the blood actually go then? The blood, you know, we, we, uh, we remove the blood shortly after we stun it. That, that's a USDA law. The actual law reads, it has to be rendered insensible to pain prior to exsanguination. That's the government's way of saying stun before blood, okay? And so once the animal is, is humanely stunned, the blood is removed quickly thereafter within probably 30 to 40 seconds or so. And see, that blood is a product that has value as well because that'll go on to uh, insulin, they'll take the insulin out of it for diabetics, they'll go on the pet food industry and things like that as well. So the blood has been removed shortly after the animal's done. Now sometimes I buy a package and there's a pad in the bottom and I don't see any juice. Did that pad absorb the juices? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Retailers for decades have understood this whole concept of, of the juice or the purge, if you have a nomenclature you want to put on that, of, of coming out of the, of the meat. And so they will put those little soaker pads at the bottom to soak that up. Because the last thing folks want to do is grab a hold of a package of meat, and I think we've all done that story, grab a hold of it and you get that on, it's kind of sticky as well. So they understand it, so that's why you see those in there. So tell me a little bit about the food safety aspects. How should we handle those? That's a really good question. We were really careful when we took the meat out of the package, but we still got some of that juice or purge on the cutting board. Standard food safety practices that we, we teach folks is you should never cross-contaminate fresh product with ready-to-eat product. For example, I would not take this cutting board unless I thoroughly cleaned it and cut my salad on this if we were doing this for dinner. Same goes if we were cutting the apples up that we would serve with the pork or whatever. We're going to treat this like we would anything else and try our best to avoid cross-contamination. So your bottom line for consumers is just be no careful. Big, yeah, it's, yeah, it's no big deal. It's nothing that there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you you can take it home and just make sure that when you take the meat out of the package that you're going to treat everything in that package the same way as you would the raw meat. Not let it come in contact with cooked or ready to eat foods for you're having for dinner or lunch that 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 day as well, and you you'll be fine. Well, thanks for clarifying that, man. My pleasure. Thank you.